Welcome everybody. This is Patrick McBride. I'm the VP of Marketing uh, here at Exceedium. Uh, so welcome to our second in a series uh, of webinars we're doing on next generation privilege identity management. Uh, the title for today's section is, is uh, Demonstrating Next Gen Privilege Identity Management. Uh, before we get started, just a couple of quick notes here. Uh, we will try to, as we go along, take some questions and we'll also reserve some time at the end of the discussion today. So if you type your questions in the, into the question box, we'll try to get to all of those. Any that we don't have time to get to during the meeting, we'll certainly follow up with uh, you directly and, and, and get that answered for you. So uh, with that, uh, let me introduce our two speakers uh, today. Uh, I'm going to spend just a, a minute or two framing uh, up a little bit of what we you know, did last week uh, in, our, in the first in the series. Uh, and then uh, John Soup, uh, who is the CTO here at Exceedium, and I think I actually have the, uh, the privilege of, of announcing John as the CTO for the first time uh, publicly. John's uh, title heretofore has been a VP of Product Management, but in, in all honesty, he's been performing the CTO role for a, a long time, and he's really the driving innovation engine, uh, working with our engineering team to, uh, to take this product to, to where it's been over the last couple of years. Uh, and uh, so John's going to be doing a piece of the presentation, kind of talking a little bit about the architecture behind uh, X Suite and how it fits into uh, into a uh, customer network. And uh, and then Sean Hank has a bucket load of experience uh, working directly with clients all around the globe. His team uh, is the systems engineering team here at Exedium, and he manages all the SEs uh, globally. So, uh, and he's, I can assure you, he's not just doing a management role, he gets his fingers dirty uh, all the time, so he's got a wealth of experience to bring to the table today, and he's going to be demonstrating some of the features of, of XSuite. Uh, so with that, let me, uh, we'll kick it off here, get a couple of uh, things that we carried over from uh, last week, and then uh, we'll jump right into the demo. So. Um, what we discussed last week was really what it took, why you needed a next-gen PIM platform, and, and what it took. And we really netted it out into these three areas. Really, using a poker analogy, table stakes uh, is this first bullet point. You know, if you don't have a comprehensive set of integrated controls in a single platform, um, you, know, you just don't have what you need because... Uh, organizations just simply can't afford the operational overhead to, you know, set up, manage, configure multiple different privilege identity management tools uh, in their infrastructure. So, you know, the ability to have an integrated tool, uh, a set of uh, controls within a tool ends up being really important, even if you're only using a piece of the tool for any given piece of the infrastructure. You know, certain, you know, infrastructure is more important than others and, and might require certain controls, but, uh, again, having that all in, in one product ends up being the, the fundamental, uh, most important piece. Uh, the second note that, uh, that we had there was protecting systems and applications and, and management consoles across a hybrid cloud environment. So if you can't really extend those controls all the way across a hybrid environment, uh, you're not, you really just don't have the uh, kind of capability that a lot of customers are looking for today or will need you know, very soon uh, as we're watching a huge number of enterprise customers. Uh, they've already uh, done a lot in virtualization and are you know, rapidly migrating uh, up into the cloud as well, into public cloud infrastructure. Uh, and the last piece of it uh, is really uh, an architectural point, and that is, you know, when you know the the whole cloud and virtualization environment has really changed the nature of way operations has done. And first, you know, there's a lot of things here, and John John will hit touch on a couple of them as we go through this. But you know, one of them is just the speed at which this stuff works with. So if you haven't got a product that's architected to deal with the the speed and dynamic environment that is uh, virtualization and, and particularly public cloud infrastructure, uh, then uh, then you just don't have what you need. And last week we also introduced uh, X Suite, uh, which we'll cover here very briefly. Um, the idea that a single platform uh, with a unified policy management system can apply a comprehensive set of controls across infrastructure and applications wherever those things may be located. Uh, and you'll notice uh, up in the upper right corner, we've still got uh, Microsoft Office 365 highlighted uh, from last week. Uh, two weeks ago, we made the announcement and added that to the portfolio. This really gives you an idea uh, of, the, uh, of a really, truly next generation privilege identity management platform that can manage and implement and enforce a robust set of controls uh, on your infrastructure and applications wherever they live, uh, and also lock down things like management consoles that you're seeing in virtualized infrastructure. Um, and I guess the, a, a final, somewhat more subtle architectural point is you know, 
customers want and need choice about where they want to run these things. So whether it's a hardware appliance uh, running in a rack and stack in a data center, uh, or whether it's a virtual appliance running on VM or uh, an AMI running up in the cloud, uh, the XSuite platform allows you to make that choice uh, and, and run those uh, where they are. So with that, let me I'll hand the baton uh, over to John, and he can kind of take us through some of the capabilities and architectural considerations with XSuite. Thanks, Patrick. Okay, uh, just a couple of caveats. Um, the slides, uh, we didn't want to slide you to death, so the slides you're going to see uh, will look a little bit AWS-centric. Uh, that's only to keep the slide count down. The actual demonstration that Sean's going to do for you in just a moment uh, will cover all the different platforms in a hybrid cloud. So just a level set, uh, there's a few things you need to do. And, and at the core of uh, what needs to happen from a uh, you know, next generation architecture is you need to be able to separate authentication from authorization. And when I say that, I mean how one would authenticate to a management platform that can work across the hybrid uh, cloud to how one would authorize and broker the session onto uh, a target. And a target can be an administrative console, a target could be an EC2 instance, a target could be a virtual machine, uh, what have you. So the idea here is if I can separate those two, I can then map uh, anyone to anywhere. And if I can do it in a way that I can attribute how they authenticated to me, then I'll know for sure whom did what on the other end. So this architecture is built specifically to support that model so that from a single place, you can assign roles, you can assign permissions across an entire uh, set of infrastructures that you own. and and those that you use, but you'll know exactly who did what, and you'll have a complete recording, uh, you know, DVR-like recording, as well as audit data uh, for the activity that happened, as well as enforcing permissions um, to those targets. So uh, uh, that's just a, a little bit of a level set there. In order to do that, there's some things we need to do. We need to be able to allow people to authenticate in many different ways, uh, whether that's a multi-factor using a smart card like a PIB card or a CAT card, uh, for our government and uh, financial customers, uh, that could be uh, Active Directory or LDAP authentication. Could be Radius, could be RSA plus Radius, or what have you. The idea is we don't limit or restrict how your users uh, need to authenticate to us in order to do what we do. We want them to do it however they do now, and we sync with what you have and revocate against what you have, so that from a single place you can either uh, give access or deny access and set permission policy in a single place. In order to do that, there's some things we need to do, like password and access key management. So if we're going to provide that access and we want to do it in a convenient uh, way for the customers, we need to do things like roll passwords. We need to be able to roll your you know, SSH keys on your targets so that the user simply just clicks a link and is single signed on directly to the target without having to ever had have a real credential on that target. That way uh, they're not circumventing your, circumventing your uh, infrastructure that would do that recording and audit. And then, of course, you know, strong authorization, attributed use. Again, we need to know exactly who did what, when they did it, how they did it, and have a full uh, admissible recording of that. So let's go on a little bit to architecture to support that. So again, this is a, an AWS reference architecture. It shouldn't be construed to mean uh, that this is AWS specific. This is just how it works in AWS. It's a very similar architecture for VMware uh, and very similar also for the enterprise. And, and I know Patrick mentioned this on the last uh, webinar, it's important to note that any platform, meaning any X suite appliance, can operate and manage any other uh, combination of platforms. So what that means is I can have an X suite, you know, AWS AMI support via a VMware infrastructure or an enterprise infrastructure, or of course an AWS infrastructure or any combination thereof. And that's true of the hardware appliance, as well as a VMware um, OVF based, uh, uh, you know, VMware virtual machine or virtual appliance. So what this uh, architecture is showing you is that if I have an if I have an uh, X suite um, appliance that's operating within let's say a VPC and you know region one zone A for a particular account, it can then manage and provide access to and that's brokered access with full recording and audit to any other account in any other region, which is really 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 convenient, so that you can from a single place assign policy, assign permissions, and give access to individuals uh, to any part of that infrastructure. What this isn't showing and what you will actually see in the demo is that I can provide that to any, uh, you know, you know, v, uh, virtual center or vSphere infrastructure at the same time, as well as uh, enterprise infrastructure for, you know, for hard assets. 
which uh, again is really really convenient. So I'm going to move on uh, to the next line, Patrick. If you wouldn't mind helping me, <laughs> he's got to set up for the webinar here. Okay. Um, I threw these in just as a teaser. Uh, I understand the next webinar we're going to be talking about our API uh, proxy capability, uh, which is which is very very cool. If you uh, if you do have time, I recommend you watch it. This is to audit not not just control access to, but record and audit uh, privileged access to API infrastructure. Uh, in this case, what we'll probably be demonstrating is our Amazon API uh, recording and uh, policy enforcement capability. It's uh, very easy to deploy. It scales very nicely, and it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, something that's really been needed. Stay tuned. That'll be uh, on the 30th, so next week we'll send out invites for that this week. Okay, great. So uh, next I want to talk about, and again, I'm flying through these so we give Sean as much time as he needs. Um, one of the first things we did is we said, well, it's not just, you know, authentication, uh, you know, for AD or LDAP. We need to be able to handle claims-based architectures, uh, specifically ones, for example, that Microsoft uses in their online portal services. And an example of that would be Office 365. So for privileged users that need to manage their Office 365 environments, I need to be able to enforce policy. I need to allow them to use their everyday AD credentials, and I need to allow them to single sign on into that environment while also recording, enforcing policy, and auditing everything they do. And, and that, that compliance piece is very important to a number of our customers. There's also a number of things we do from an architecture perspective that allow you to have them log in directly to your environment and get access to Office 365 so they're not going direct to the internet without having been controlled and audited, which is really important. But look at the architecture to support that. This is a, a simplified way of looking at it. Um, but for example, if I need access uh, to a .gov address, if I'm a government employee or a contractor, for example, and I need to also get to Office 365, I can go that way and still comply and have everything uh, controlled and audited. And if Sean is ready, we'll, uh, we'll jump over to the demo so you can actually see this stuff. All right, guys, can you hear me okay? We can. You're a little low. Thanks. All right, so what I'm going to demonstrate or what I'm going to show, first of all, is just a couple of different use cases. Um, tell me if you guys can see my screen. I don't know if you guys are seeing that yet or not. Not quite yet. Not yet. All right, you guys should be seeing a uh, Windows desktop. There it is. There you go. All right, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so what are we going to talk about today? So you, you've heard Patrick talk a little bit about you know, the next generation privileged identity and access management platform, what we call X-Suite. John just walked through a few of the different reference architectures and talked uh, at a high level some of the use cases. And my job here on the demonstration today is to really show you how that works. And one of the ways that I can do that most effectively is to just give you a little picture of what I'm going to show you and then show you what I'm demonstrating in the picture. So what you're seeing here on this particular screen is a use case that I'm referring to as a target server access use case. There are resources that exist out in AWS, whether you're using web or secure web uh, applications, whether you are connecting to an EC2 instance that is in the, an EC2 classic or in a, in a VPC environment over RDP, and are accessing a Linux type resource, SSH based or Telnet based resource that again exists out in VPC or EC2 classic. We also have the ability to connect out to VMware infrastructure whether we're talking about connecting to the ESX or ESXi host itself or connecting to various guest operating systems that operate in those environments and even being able to actually provide web-based access to the ESX infrastructure and, and guest operating systems as well. You'll notice here over on the left, um, John had talked about multiple different ways that we can authenticate to XSuite. So whether we're using Active Directory, LDAP, RSA, RADIUS, PKI, browser-based certificates or smart card-based certificates, we have a mechanism to authenticate any user that gains access to XSuite, at the same time separating out the authentication piece from the XSuite access and authorization piece. Very, very important function because with XSuite, we make no assumptions or inherent uh, assumptions, I should say, about any access that is going to be automatically granted based upon a login. If you don't have an express access policy defined to give a user access to a system, 
just because they've successfully authenticated to XSuite doesn't mean that they'll have access. In fact, what they'll look at is a blank screen. We have the ability to record all these sessions, so 24 by 7, 365 audit quality, DVR-like playback session recordings. We also give you the ability to generate syslog and SNMP traps, so if you want to be able to forward all your logs to a SIM tool or log management tool, you can do that as well. Okay, so what the use case I'm going to demonstrate is really just showing how we jump around between a VMware environment into a, an AWS environment and even into an Office 365 environment all from a single platform, all right, called XSuite. One of the other core use cases that we are going to talk about is this ability to have the new generation console administrator, right? So the, one of the things that you maybe remember Pat talking about from the first webinar that we did in this series was the fact that uh, any new generation administrator or console admin is, is basically combining the ease and functionality of a VM or console with the ease and functionality of an app store type of environment where once you turn on an instance you're automatically going to be incurring charges. So wouldn't it be nice if you had an ability to be able to control which users were able to access those web interfaces in addition to leveraging again that same type of authentication capability that I spoke about earlier give them the ability to be able to federate and track that identity across all of the different environments that you're accessing. So if you wanted to know if it was Steve who went into AWS and then turned on those 500 uh, Linux servers for some compute program he was doing, you'd be able to get that level of detail right away. Similarly, uh, whether we're talking about the AWS GovCloud instance, whether we're talking about Office 365 um, services, right, whether we're talking about Link, Exchange, SharePoint, or even Office 365 administration itself, we can do that. And again, doing the same thing for the Thick Client vCenter console as well as the web console. Again, tracking everything that's done over those web or RDP sessions, uh, Thick Client applications, tracking all of that activity back to an individual user. And then, of course, the third use case we've got that I'll talk about today is really audit level access. Uh, who's watching the watchers? You need need to be able to make sure that in addition to you know making sure the administrators are doing everything that they're doing in a proper format you want to make sure that the auditors are able to gain access to all of the logs and the data there as well and auditors are no different from an XSuite perspective they still need to authenticate their sessions are going to be recorded and any access that they perform in the environment is going to be tracked logged and recorded as well so being able to apply all of the same principles that we're going to be doing work for our privileged users we apply them to the auditor as well and again, doing it all from the same platform. So that's basically what we're going to cover today. Again, the three use cases, auditor access, hybrid console access, and accessing target servers themselves. Okay, so with that, I'm going to close this presentation and we'll get started. All right. So again, I am uh, just have a standard Windows 7 desktop environment set up here. All right, and you'll see that I've got a couple different browser pages open. Um, this is an actual uh, XSuite environment that I'm running here locally uh, as a VMware uh, OVF compliant image. Okay, so what I'm going to do is first show you that we can do multiple different types of authentication, and I've got different sort of users set up to perform different levels of activity in this environment. So the first thing I'm going to do is just show you how I'm going to use a local credential uh, with my own username, Sean, and I'm going to log in. And when I log in, you're going to notice that I'm going to be greeted with an administration or uh, uh, access page. And this page basically gives me high-level information about you know, the number of licenses that I'm currently, currently using, the number of uh, password change requests and things that have gone on in the system, and the overall health and status of, of the environment. If I go to the Access tab, one of the first things you're going to notice is that I'm giving an entire list of different types of resources that I'm able to access over various protocols. Now, in my case, you'll notice here that I've created a view called VMware that allows me to see only the VMware resources that I want to connect to. All right. Now, first thing I'm going to do is just show one of the target server use cases whereby I connect to a Windows 2008 server uh, running here inside of a VMware ESX host-based environment. Notice that as this thing is launching, this applet is launching to this desktop environment, Notice that I didn't have to enter a credential. 
one of the core tenets of XSuite is that we want to make it really easy for users to be able to get access to the resources and not have to worry about a lot of overhead or administrative functionality. So being able to have XSuite manage the passwords on the back end and provide them when the user wants to make a connection, assuming that they have a proper access policy defined, will give them the ability to have single sign-on access to the target system itself. So no longer do you have to worry about handing out passwords to different users, making sure that passwords are changed on a rotating basis, or you know, giving a, a, a username and a password, a privileged account access to a vendor, and then wondering if I have to go back in there after the fact and remove the account. And one of the core functionalities of XSuite is to make things easier, and we feel that by having XSuite manage the passwords in an automated fashion, uh, you're able to remove one of the threat vectors that are out there, which is compromised credentials uh, from users typing them in uh, over, over the web. And, such. So here you'll see uh, active log desktop environment that I've got running here, right? Uh, if I just do a quick little uh, example, whoops, getting my IP and IF configs confused between different operating system environments. So it's a live running valid system. Uh, one of the core use cases that I like to demonstrate is while I'm connected to this Windows 2008 server, being able to launch PuTTY and actually connect out into AWS uh, through PuTTY for an SSH connection, all right? And one of the things that you'll notice when I do this is that there's a pop-up message. There's actually two. One is a putty error saying that connection to that resource is not possible. And then an XSuite error that basically says uh, in a customized message, access to that particular uh, resource over that particular protocol is denied and that the security operations center has been notified. There is, again, built-in email alerting. There is built-in uh, syslog generation so you can forward these logs to your SIM tool and have them show up on a display screen if you so choose and we also can send these alerts via SNMP. Okay? So showing the example of again trying to make an SSH connection from PuTTY, a thick client installed app while I'm connected to this particular server. One of the other use cases that we run into quite frequently is the ability to go ahead and launch a nested RDP session whereby you want to make an RDP connection to this target server here and then from there I want to make a connection to another resource. Again, what you'll notice here is that the connection is being blocked not only at the RDP level with that uh, RDP pop-up in the background but also from XSuite and again letting the end user know that this particular command or this particular connection is not allowed. Again, being able to provide this level of containment in a VMware environment is really, really critical if you have a use case whereby remote users or even internal users need access to some sensitive information on a particular system, and you don't want to be able to allow that user to make outbound socket connections from that environment. I'll just do it one more time just to hit what I call a violation threshold just to show you this functionality as well. What you'll notice here when I run this command is that it lets you know right away in the interface that you've exceeded the maximum number of violations, you've hit your violation threshold, and therefore the session is going to be terminated. Okay, And there you go, you can see that it actually uh, terminated the session and I clicked on no, but I double clicked it and it caused a restart of the session, so I'll just close that out. Now. That, that's uh, an RDP use case for us, okay? Again, I'm logged into XSuite from a Windows 7 desktop connecting to a Windows 2008 server, and I've tried to make a bunch of outbound connections from that 2008 server. I also have the ability from the same XSuite instance to bridge the gap between VMware and AWS, okay? And here what you're looking at right now on the screen is an AWS set of resources that I have. And so with this user account, what I'm going to do is really just make a connection out to the AWS Linux instance that I have running out inside of this environment. Uh, my internet connection is running a little bit flaky today. I'm not sure why there's a reason for the slowdown. But in any case, one of the things that I can tell you about while I do this is that with our AWS and VMware integration, we have this ability to do what we call auto discovery and auto importing. Um, that usually results in our ability to automatically provision or add to add devices to existing resources in the environment. So gone are the days of needing to do things like an nmap scan to get a list of resources to do an import. Simply leveraging the AWS API command infrastructure and leveraging the VMware uh, API infrastructure, we're able to actually provide a automated ability to import uh, devices and automatically inherit existing uh, policies and apply them to devices that exist. Okay. So now while this session has come up, you'll notice here that it says that there are some updates. I'm actually connected out. You can see the EC2 banner comes up, AWS, uh, excuse me, Amazon Linux Omni is shown right here. Now, it says here that there are some updates, and if I wanted to try to, with my EC2 user ID, attempt to do a yum update, 
one of the first things that you're going to see is that it's going to say you need to be root to perform this activity. Now, that's great and wonderful. Um, this is a real live working system. If I do a top here, you'll see that there's all kinds of processes that are running. Uh, if I also do a show running process, oops you'll see that there's a ton of different processes that are running on this particular system. So it's a live ballot working system. So again, I ran a yum update command as a standard user EC2 non-privileged user account, and it says that I need to be root to perform the activity. So if I try to actually escalate privilege, if I could type today, and try to execute that command, one of the first things that you're going to see is that it tells us that sudo yum update is an unauthorized command and we've actually prevented that command from executing at the application layer from my Windows 7 desktop to the AWS Omni instance. So I'm not able to execute the sudo yum update command because we've actually blacklisted and said that the command sudo is an unauthorized command. Similarly, if I wanted to perform something like an Etsy uh, init the network restart, you'll see very similarly again that we've actually created a policy that prevents restart from being executed inside of this AWS Linux environment as well. Uh, if I wanted to even maybe do something like a cat etsy pass wd file to see a list of all the different users, again I hit the violation threshold, all of my sessions have disappeared, gone. Okay. Now why is this important? if you are in a situation where you want to give access to resources and you want to be able to provide single sign-on type functionality to that resource so it's a seamless point-and-click type of experience for your end users you can do that with XSuite whether they're internal administrators whether they're business partners whether they're third-party contractors really makes no difference who the remote user is giving them access to your internal networking environment across multiple different resources is something you can do with XSuite today. Again, single platform uh, with no need to worry about passing out credentials. Uh, incidentally, one of the things that was overlooked was that when I actually logged into the AWS Linux instance, again, I was automatically signed on with an EC2 user account. Uh, by default, AWS doesn't use username and passwords. You actually have to log in using certificates. And so XSuite actually has the ability to leverage certificate-based auth, uh, as I did here in this instance, to connect to SSH or out there to that AWS Linux One instance. Now, kind of doing a lot of talking here, so what I'm going to do at this point is really um, take, take a moment, and I'm actually going to bring up and sh sort of show a, re a review of what everything I just performed. So if you remember, I logged into XSuite with the user Sean account. I then turned around and connected via RDP to perform some activities to demonstrate that functionality. And then I connected via SSH to another resource. So to do that, I could do it right from here inside of this session, but what I'm going to actually do is log off and I'm going to log in with a different role. Okay. In this case, I'm going to log in with Audrey Auditor. Audrey's my audit level role that I've got on the system. And what I want to be able to do is show you how you can provide different levels of user uh, access leveraging role-based access controls inside of XSuite. Again, I'm gonna, instead of using a local login, I'm actually going to log in using an LDAP credential to the XSuite demo domain. And when I log in with this credential, what you're going to notice is I get a slightly different access page. I don't get the default landing page showing all of the system uh, availability information because Audrey's an auditor. She's not an administrator. And so her permissions are slightly different. Okay. You can see that if I go to the global settings, I get to look at all of the different settings related to this particular appliance that I'm using. Okay, it's, Everything is grayed out because as an auditor, she only has read-only access and she can't make any modifications to the system. She also has an ability to look at the logs that were generated by the system. Uh, notice earlier, if you remember, I said that I had logged in with a, a user account called Sean and I was able to perform all of these activities. Well, Sean performed and had a violation inside of this RDP session. And so with this audit level control and with this role that I've got for Audrey, I can actually click right here and look at that recording right from the log page on the screen. So I don't have to worry about trying to correlate logs. I don't have to worry about doing any of that activity. And when I click on the link, it actually took me right to where that violation took place, just before the violation took place, actually. So you can actually see here with this little yellow tooltip pop-up that lets us know that Sean tried to make a connection out to this host. Okay, So very, very important to understand that throughout this process, we are actually logging and recording all of the activity and then giving 
the appropriately provisioned users the ability to play back these sessions in near real time. Uh, over here on the left, you'll see some information about this particular session. This was about a three minute long recording. We know that Sean was actually the XSuite user uh, ID of the, uh, Sean is the ID of the user that logged into XSuite. And then we turned around and XSuite provided a login with an account called test1 to this particular target server. So despite the fact that this is a three minute recording, we're only eating up about 329.74 kilobytes of hard drive space. So our recording file sizes are very small. We're not using any kind of an agent to do this recording. We don't require any kind of conversion to Flash or MP4 or WMV files. Uh, everything is actually performed uh, uh, within the XSuite solution itself, so there's no need to worry about installing additional software on your target servers for purposes of being able to get this level of recording. Okay. Again, just being able to double click here through the different violations to show where they took place and how they took place gives you much more context, more granular context in regards to what took place during that session, what was the user doing when these violations occurred, and again, being able to play that back for you in near real time with very small file sizes. Okay. Again, if I were to move up the stack, so this was Sean in the RDP session. If I move up the stack, you'll see that it went from Sean connecting to the Windows 2008 server to Sean making a connection out to the AWS Linux resource, and again, capturing that same level of log information. Okay. Now what you'll notice about this session is that I actually have not allowed logs to be captured for the text-based sessions. And the reason for that is just again to show you the differences in how you can configure the product. And also to show you that as an auditor, Audrey has no ability to do anything but read and look at information that's collected in the system. Okay. Uh, reports can be run. We've got some built-in out-of-the-box PCI type reports so that if you wanted to look at fail user logins, you wanted to look at um, you know, how many times users have logged in or logged out, we can provide those. And you can also actually do searches based on individual users as well. So in this case, if I wanted to look at all the violations for a particular user, I'll say Sean, and I'll check all three of these different variants to my account, and I say search. I can get a list of all the different violations that took place in the session, and I can either download this or save this as a report as a CSV file or set it up to be emailed to me on a weekly basis. Okay, So some really cool built-in reporting capabilities that we've got. Uh, so in addition to that level of access as an auditor, not only are we providing audit level access to XSuite itself okay, through the interface, but we also have the ability to provide uh, access to vSphere. And we also have the ability to provide access to the RDP thick client vSphere application. Uh, notice on the screen here as we do this that I'm being automatically logged into the vCenter server and it's automatically launching the vSphere client and logging me into the vSphere client uh, uh, all without me having to do anything, just uh, click a link. Similarly, while I do that, I'm going to launch this uh, web browser session to that same VMware instance so I can show you both the web version of vCenter as well as the um, RDP based version of vCenter through the thick client of vSphere. Okay. So while that's logging in, this is going to log me in as well. And then while all of that is going on, let me just log in one more time and show you the Splunk web interface that we've actually set up to capture and aggregate all the logs from all of these various systems. So within XSuite, having the ability to map different types of permissions with different types of applications, whether I'm talking about thick client apps, thin client apps, command line apps, RDP apps, being able to tie all of these things together to be able to give you, again, from a single place, uh, Audrey is her name, giving you single click access from a single interface, the ability to look at all of these logs and capture all this information. Okay, So here you'll see that the most recent event took place at 0949. Here's a list of all of the different events that took place. And if I just look within the last 15 minutes here, you'll see uh, here's the most recent one where we show that access to port 8000 for the user Audrey was granted to the Splunk interface. I could also from here just type in through the free text search function of Splunk. Apologize while I get my typing skills in order. Do search for all the violations that took place and here you'll see in the last 15 minutes here's a listing of all the violations. Right, Very similar to what I had done earlier just inside of the XSuite interface. Uh, but here you'll see for example unauthorized word cat Etsy password was typed. And again you can create reports inside of any you know Splunk Nitro security, 
RSA Envision, ArcSight, you know, Logger tool, Logarithm, LogLogix, all of those various tools, uh, any of the log management tools that you have, you'll be able to perform these types of alerts because XSuite simply just forwards the correlated data to the end user. Uh, one of the unique things about XSuite is that we're correlating all of this user activity to the individual XSuite user ID. So it allows you the ability to get a very clean source of syslog data into your SIM tool or log management tool, thereby mitigating or minimizing the need to constantly tweak and tune your correlation engine rules. Very, very neat feature of XSuite. Okay, so this is the, uh, I'm going to show you the administrator access via the web client. Wow, my typing skills are really bad today. And let this load up. And I'm very conscious of the clock, so what I'm going to do is once we're once we're done showing this, and this will show up here. Right, notice, if you will, on this uh, thick client RDP session that I'm in, I'm actually right-clicking on the desktop. I know you can't see that, but I'm doing it, and you'll see the mouse is kind of flickering on the screen there, doing everything I can to try to get some type of session going outside of the the vSphere client that I'm in. Uh, not possible to do that. Uh, here you'll see that I've got the X Suite. Uh, GA 2.2 release that's running on the system here. Okay, so I can do things like look at tasks and events and all those sorts of things. I've got a bunch of resources that are lined up here. Uh, one of the things that I did not mention previously that's worth mentioning is that we actually have a mechanism uh, as part of XSuite, uh, in addition to the auto discovery capability, to automatically create groups based upon your vCenter grouping function. So here you'll see that I've got uh, inside of my SC demo environment, I've got a Linux folder that's got a Splunk instance and a, a Red Hat instance that's turned off. I have three of five machines in my Windows folder set up, and then of course I've got an XSuite instance that's running here. All of these folders are actually mapped one for one inside of the XSuite interface as well. So as you add new groups or create new groups inside of your vCenter instance, and you move devices in and out of these groups, those changes are synchronized with XSuite automatically. So there's no need for you to have to worry about manually uh, adding new devices or removing new devices or recreating groups inside of XSuite. When you create them inside of VMware or you create them inside of AWS, they automatically populate inside of inside of XSuite accordingly. And if I were to actually kill this session, I think I'm set up here as a, as a read-only user, if I'm not mistaken, as I try to just do a right-click on this particular resource here. This is my Splunk server. Yeah. Again, I've, I've, I've given myself only read-only permissions based upon the single sign-on ID that I'm using with this with this particular session. I have no ability to power on or power off these systems. So uh, use case here, you want to give someone access to the vCenter console. You don't want them the ability to turn on or turn off machines, but you want them to be able to look at resource allocation, get performance metrics. You can do all those kinds of things right from within uh, XSuite and not allow the end user to make changes to that target system. As I close a vCenter uh, RDP session, it's actually going to uh, terminate the actual RDP environment itself, and that session will go away. You can see it's locking me off, and we're done. I'm going to go ahead and try to log in here one more time. Seems like I keep on fat fingering my password. Okay. So I've shown you RDP access, I've shown you uh, SSH access, I've shown you how we can um, do containment uh, in those environments, I've also shown how we can contain RDP applications. I've launched a few different web sessions, one of them was a Splunk session, here's a VMware session that's going on. But one of the things I haven't yet done uh, to continue this hybrid theme is really uh, talk about being able to access AWS. And so what I'm going to do from here is actually log in with a different credential. This time I'm just going to use my initials and I'm going to actually log in with the domain credential again. All right. Now in this policy that I've got set up for this particular user account, I only have a single bit of access. Right? Again, I'm still connected to the same XSuite instance that I was before. The only difference now is that I'm using a different account and I have a different access policy associated with this domain account. And what you're going to see that shows up on the screen is instead of me having, you know, either VMware access or having AWS access, I'm only going to be given access to a single instance. And again, uh, th things seem to be running a little bit slow for me today. I'm not 100% sure why that is. But here you'll see single access policy for me being able to get to the AWS Management Console. Again, simply click on it. And when I make the connection, what's actually happening behind the scenes is XSuite is leveraging the AWS STS API and the federated user framework to give me access to the AWS environment. 
the actual AWS IAM policy and any of the rules associated with that are all enforced and input into XSuite. So XSuite becomes the de facto enforcement point for your policies inside of AWS without the need for you managing your IAM credentials in, in AWS as well as managing your, say, your Active, user, Active Directory user store in your premise. Now, the idea is to make it really easy to bridge the gap between giving your existing security groups and your existing users in Active Directory access that they need out to AWS without the need, again, for maintaining different uh, uh, overhead in regards to, to management of the different, different repositories or different groups of users. Okay? In this particular case, I'm logged in with the credential here. You'll see here's my login ID for XSuite, and we actually log in with this credential into AWS. And so if you look at the AWS logs, it'll actually show SWH at XSuiteDemo.com logged into the AWS Management Console. From here, you'll see that uh, there are some instances that there's not a whole lot that I can do in this environment based upon the policy that I was assigned. So I don't have access to actually go into, let's say, EC2 and turn on or turn off instances, right? As that comes up on the page, what you're going to see here is it says that I'm not authorized to perform this operation, which makes sense. You know, if I'm not given access to do that based upon my policy, I shouldn't be allowed to. If I go over to the IAM interface and I try to look at, you know, how my policy is actually configured, again, you'll see that, guess what? This federated user ID is not authorized to perform uh, getting the account summary or getting the password policy or showing all of the different account aliases. I have no permissions to do anything inside of this environment other than, uh, I believe, with this particular policy, only look at the S3 buckets that are generated. Okay, So allowing you, the administrator, or allowing you, the business owner, to control access to multiple different resources across multiple different consoles from a single pane of glass is something that we feel is uh, bringing extremely uh, valuable capability to the marketplace today. All right. Now, what does that policy look like? Just jump in real quick here. Got a few more minutes so I can just show you a little bit more. Here's an example of what one of the JSON policies look like. Here you see that I've actually defined uh, the uh, AWS resource resources that I want to be able to use. In this case, I'm only allowed to get the S3 list and or get the S3 buckets and then only show show the list of the S3 buckets without any ability to, to, to add or remove, Since the, hence the uh, S3 read-only bucket name here for the policy. Uh, we've set the time to be valid for only 60 minutes, so one of the features of the federated user concept inside of AWS is that you can limit how long that session credential or that tokenized um, ticket is going to be good for, and in my case, I've got it set for 60 minutes. Okay, and you can add others that you want. You can complete, uh, complete customized capability here. You know the new the new features that AWS IAM have added, which is the ability to turn on and turn off specific instances inside of AWS, either from the command line or from the console. You can actually apply those changes inside of the JSON statement here inside of XSuite as well. Again, key difference here is that from XSuite, you define the AWS policies, you set the enforcement point within XSuite and any user that needs access out to AWS will get it from XSuite, and you no longer have to worry about maintaining different user repositories within your corporate network, as well as different user uh, policies and rules inside of AWS. Makes for a really nice mix of the capability that you can give to an administrator. All right, now last little bit I'm going to talk about um, this particular instance that I'm running. Uh, you know, John earlier in his presentation talked a little bit about kind of what's coming down the pipe for us, and I want to, you know, make sure that we address that as well. So from this other instance that I'm running, uh, you'll see that the uh, URL for this particular XSuite appliance is a little bit different. It's more of a streamlined use case whereby I can actually launch uh, a management console interface, again, to uh, AWS using a different credential with a different domain uh, from my XSuite platform, all right? As I log in with this particular account, what you're going to see is I get all of the same capability I had before. Nothing's different in that regard. Uh, what is different is that we're actually going to be able to, you know, record the sessions and play these sessions back for you without any kind of an issue, right? So here you'll see that now I've got very original name, user1 at corp.xcdpoc.com. And inside of this environment, in this case, if I were to move through the EC2 dashboard, it will give me the ability to actually bring that up and make a connection to it and all those types of fun things. So I can do whatever the you know, daily administration work that I need to do. Turn on instances, turn off instances, create new instances. Again, doing all of this in the concept of a federated user identity that's tracked back to um, the user account that I use to log into XSuite with. Okay. 
One last thing that I'll show here uh, is the Office 365 integration that we just recently completed. It's um, coming to market here before the end of August. Uh, it's something that we're able to demonstrate here inside of um, this demo or development test system. So I did click on Office 365 administration. Okay, You'll see that that launches another web browser for us. And as this thing loads, what you're going to see is I'm automatically provided a login, a single sign-on login, if you will, to the interface. And from, from here, I'll be able to gain access to the resource. Let me just close that because I clicked on the link too many times and I want to make sure that I don't confuse anybody on the phone. Pat, I've been talking for a really long time. I know I have. I just wasn't sure if there were any questions that you could throw at me, or if uh, anybody in the audience had any questions that they wanted to throw at me while this uh, while this demonstration comes to a close. Um, so, so um, I just throw that out to you in case there are any. So, if you want to tee those up, I'm I'm just about done here, so we can use the last. So we've actually to get hey, some questions answered. Hey, Sean, we've actually been answering them online for the pen. We've been getting some great questions, so we'll, you know, let, please keep them coming. We've been kind of typing them in and. Uh, and answering them as uh, as we went along here. And can okay. The last one, if you like, uh, which you could actually show this, Sean. Is there a UI to create X Suite policy? This would be blacklist, whitelist policy. An example: uh, disable uh, sudo commands. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. Let me show you that in just a second. I'll finish up this Office 365 bit, and then we'll jump right to that. So. Here is um, the Office 365 admin panel. Again, I'm logged into the system. I'm logged into XSuite from XSuite. I said, please launch me into Office 365. Uh, I'm logged in. I have the ability to manage Exchange. I have the ability to manage SharePoint. I have the ability to add and remove users from the Office 365 subscription list that I've got. I can do all this right from the context of, of XSuite. The main benefit of this, could you do this from the web? Absolutely. Doing it directly from the web, however, um, nullifies your ability to provide the recording of the session and to know what user, what administrative user, what privileged user uh, added, removed, deleted, or changed the service. Right? You might be able to get that from logs. I'm not sure what the, uh, what the uh, rules are, what Microsoft offers in the form of a service as far as giving you that, that level of logging detail, but giving you the ability to capture these session recordings yourself, uh, to be able to store them on a system that's not beholden to the service provider, but you know, in, in something that you can contain and control and own, uh, is something that's very, very useful. Uh, I'm going to log off here, and I'm going to log in with a global administrative account. So give me just one second while I do this. Log in here. Um, and you know, set to local, Sean. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I access all these systems on a pretty consistent basis, and so it's sometimes hard for me to remember uh, which <laughs> which which form of authentication I'm viewing on what box. Okay, let's try that one more time. All right. So now what I've just done is instead of using a standard user account, I've logged in with an administrative account for purposes of being able to show you the session recordings themselves. Okay. So here's an example uh, that I was just in where I was logged in with a with a web session. Okay, and I'm just going to click on recording here and play back this this particular web session that's about 418 kilobytes in size. All right, and you'll see here that I've got a whole list of different ones of all the different demos that we've done over time, and so being able to just play these back is pretty important. Okay, again showing the XSuite user ID here showing how long the session's going on, about two minutes in this case, and it's about 427 kilobytes large. Uh, one other thing I didn't mention about the session recordings previously, all of our session recordings actually come, are built in to have a SHA-1 hash at device creation or at the file instantiation. And the reason for that is if you ever need to do any kind of discovery or if there's ever a need to provide some type of validation that this particular session uh, was in fact generated by XSuite, you've got a tamper proof or tamper evidence control in place in the form of a SHA-1 hash that, that lets you know that the system was in fact um, generated the file and that the file is indeed valid. Uh, down here at the bottom, I'm just going to kind of fast forward through this because uh, I want to got less than five minutes and I just want to kind of show how we're able to run through this process. So again, just uh, want to make sure that you realize and understand that we are actually capturing and logging all of this information on the system. Okay. So that's the session recording of the Office 365. One last little bit I'm going to do here as I log off 
is go back to my other demo environment. Sorry. And as I log into here, I'm just going to log in with my Sean credential again. And I'm going to actually show you the policies. Sean, this goes back to addressing the question that came up about the policies. How can you define what we call filters, add-on policies, or overlay policies? So this is where it's done. Uh, this is the actual customization page where you can change what, what the warning message is that you're going to have inside of your SSH or Telnet sessions. If you choose to get and receive email alerts, you can actually define an additional message here. This is uh, the part of the screen where you set your violation threshold. Uh, you'll see here that there are basically three levels of automated remediation that we provide with XSuite. The first level, which is always going to be enforced no matter what, is block any of the actions that are there. Block a command. Uh, if it's on a blacklist, we're going to block the command from executing. If a command is on a whitelist, we're going to allow the, the commands that are on the whitelist, but block everything else. Second level of that is what I've got to set to, which is after you hit that violation threshold of three, log the user out of the session. You could also set it up so that you deactivate the user's account, and I'll show you what happens and what a typical workflow environment looks like when a, a user account is actually deactivated here. Uh, the question came up about how do you blacklist or whitelist commands. It's very simple. Simple matching that we're doing uh, for the commands, and you simply then at that point do uh, an alert or block checkbox. Do you want to be alerted that a user ran sudo? Do you not care to be alerted, but you definitely want to block it? You can sort of configure these parameters uh, based upon this. XSuite does support standard POSIX regex, so if you wanted to create reg regular expressions and use those as part of your keywords, you could do that. Uh, so this is a blacklist. See, I'm using drop, host, kill, pass, WD, reboot, restart, SSH, sudo, and SU. On the whitelist side, uh, you know, commands that I want to expressly allow, you can see I've only got ping and NSLOOKUP. You can create as many whitelists or blacklists as you want in the system, and you're completely fine to be able to apply different whitelists and blacklists to different policies at the individual user and device level or at the user group to device group level. Uh, on the socket containment side, you can see that I actually have some IP addresses defined along with some specific ports that I'm blocking. And if I wanted to contain inside of vCenter and prevent uh, unauthorized access to anything other than LDAP or LDAP over SSL, you can see here I've created a whitelist that says contain a user only to this particular host, but do allow 389 and 636 out. Okay, so that pretty much answers the you know how do you build the filters question. Uh, one last thing I'll show you again from a logging perspective, a user is told you know hey your system you're locked out of your account. Uh, let's go back and, and play the sessions. How do we do that? Um, here, if you remember earlier, uh, I played back with the Autry auditor account. I played back the Splunk session. It was a web-based session, and you know the question always comes up: Are you watching the what the auditors are doing as well? Uh, yes, we are. XSuite does allow you the ability to do that. Again, you'll see that I logged into the XSuite interface with the Audrey Auditor account. A SHA-1 verification is being done, and as I minimize this information bar, you can actually see that we're logging in, even capturing all of my messed up keystrokes uh, to be able to play this file back and actually show what the auditor did while they were connected in this case uh, to the log management system. Notice in the upper right-hand corner here how we're logged in with the Audrey Auditor account. And again, just showing all the mouse movements and all the, all the playback of the session that took place. So we're right at 2.59. I've got one minute to spare. I thought I would just turn it back over to you, John and Pat, to see if there are any additional questions, final questions, before we close out the webinar today. We've been kind of, as we're going, let me see, there's, uh, there's one, uh, and I might, you know, toss this to, to John, too, make sure we, you know, there, there may be some different perspectives on this, but uh, we've been typing in, you know, furiously answers, uh, and we've got some fantastic questions, so thanks, everybody, for that. Uh, w one we have up in front of us now is, does Exceedium work with hybrid cloud architecture based on AWS? I guess there's a, there's a couple ways to interpret that, but... Uh, yeah, I, so the short answer is, is yes. The uh, all manner of AWS infrastructure works with our with our AWS XSuite product. Uh, I'm not sure if that's uh, to be construed to mean can I use my AWS Omni on uh, and managing both targets and admin consoles uh, from other environments uh, in conjunction with AWS. If that's what the question is, then absolutely, uh, you certainly can. 
Okay, so you could deploy our hardware device in your data center and manage up to the AWS environment or across the you know, VMware environment as well with that same device. Or across the enterprise. or Across or the whole enterprise. And the same thing is, is it true, it's absolutely true. If you're running our X Suite appliance, you know, our virtual appliance as an AMI up in AWS, uh, it can manage, again, the, the only caveat is you have to have network routes to it, of course, but uh, oh, yeah. it can manage your you know, infrastructure that's residing in your traditional data center. Uh, and uh, can also manage, you know, infrastructure that's running obviously up in AWS or uh, on a virtualized environment. I guess one of the things that we didn't note here, and that, you know, sometimes we actually short ourselves a little bit, is um, in addition to kind of some of the obvious servers that we support in the in the data center. You know, so we want to do Linux and you know Unix and, and Windows-based servers. You know, we also support mainframe AS400 and a that's host right. of networking devices that's uh, right. as well. So, um, you know, that's. Uh, that's, uh, I guess, you know, something we, we don't always make perfectly clear, but hybrid to us means more than just, you know, Unix or Windows servers running wherever. It's It also includes a host of other really important infrastructure in your environment. Um, I think we've, it looks like we've uh, done the other one. We've got some great questions on, you know, some, you know, some things that we do already and, and forward looking. Hopefully I, I responded and, you know, shot those answers back out to everybody in the audience. So we'll Take another second or two. If, if anybody has any final questions, uh, we'll hang around here for just a second. And and so we got it. it, it it's always great for us. I mean, we, you know, we'd rather not hear ourselves talk. We'd much rather answer answer questions. So that's always a, a delight when we get so many great ones. Well, it looks like we've got them all covered, uh, Sean. Uh, and uh, so so you know, John and, and Sean, thank you very much. Uh, I think we have a very compelling uh, view of. Uh, what we believe is the only, you know, system uh, able to do the, you know, comprehensive controls that we showed you across that kind of hybrid environment. And, uh, you know, so hopefully you guys all came away uh, with, with that impression uh, as well. We'd be certainly happy to follow up with any of you and answer other detailed questions that, uh, that you or your teams may have uh, as you, as you, uh, you know, get back to, uh, back to work. So you can, you know, reach out to us uh, and email, uh, uh, or the easy way is just to hit our website and hit the contact us form and we'll get right on that. So with that, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, very good to have you. Thanks for uh, playing with us with a bunch of questions and we will uh, uh, please remember that we have uh, you know, another webinar next week, the third part uh, of the, this three-part series where you know, John kind of gave the, the head forward nod that uh, we're going to be talking about how to control other access to uh, a management console, which a lot of advanced cloud users are using, uh, that is a management uh, API. So uh, we'll cover that and have some really exciting news to share with you at that time. So thank you and have a wonderful afternoon, uh, evening or morning uh, in some cases for, uh, you know, we've, we've got a worldwide audience, so uh, uh, we uh, have to hit all the time zones. I guess that also means it's five o'clock somewhere and uh, so we're, we'll bid out and, uh, and, and wish you all a great day. Take care.